Hello, and welcome to Bandstand, the official podcast of the Tennessee Bandmasters Association. I'm your host, David Adelit, and I hope you'll join us on a journey through the past, present, and future of bands in Tennessee. We'll delve into the rich history of Tennessee bands, uncovering the hidden gems and legendary figures who shaped the state's band landscape. We'll survey the present, where you'll meet the movers and shakers of today, gaining insights from their expertise and experiences. And we'll gaze towards the future, exploring the exciting possibilities that await Tennessee's school bands. The idea behind this podcast is to create connections in our state. So uh, we have such a regional state with the three grand divisions, with the way we sort of do band with East Tennessee, Middle Tennessee, and West Tennessee. And so often directors kind of get into a silo and they only, just by the nature of those events, because that's where we talk to people and talk shop, we don't get a chance except for at the conference every year to really uh, meet people from across the state. And so this podcast is trying to create a sense of connection now. Uh, and I think, I think we're going to be able to do that. And, and the other thing is we have so many folks that have, that are, that have moved into the state from outside and maybe don't know our history that it's important for us to connect not only across the state, but also through time. So, you know, do people know that the oldest band in the country is from Tennessee? You know, do people know that, uh, I don't know, you can pick any many myriad of things about the history of bands in Tennessee that are really, uh, you know, significant. And so we want to try to highlight some of those things as well. So knowing those kind of things, that gives us hope, right? So if I'm a young teacher and I'm just starting out and I have questions about whether or not I'm going to be able to do this job or not, having a, a connection with Ali Liddell or with J.R. Baker, or with Joanne Hood, and knowing the struggle that it takes to go through to get to a place where you can be successful, that's important. Uh, because young teachers, this is from my two years of uh, being the fine arts director in Williamson County, is they tend to sort of hunker down oftentimes and not ask for help. And so knowing that Joanne Hood had struggles in her teaching career and then ended up in the echelon of teachers that she did, that, that gives everybody hope. And so I'm hoping that we'll be able to do that. Uh, just so many great things from Tennessee that have happened that I want folks to know about that in, in, are happening now. I mean, there's great things that are happening in the state now that aren't necessarily uh, common, I would imagine, in other states. And we should, we should let people know about that sort of stuff. So let's get into some co-host introductions. Uh, we're going to go alphabetically. So uh, we're going to start with J.R. Baker. J.R. is the current president of Tennessee Bandmasters, and uh, he's also the fine arts coordinator, is it coordinator, JR, or director, in, in Robertson County. So, JR, take it away. Thanks, David. Uh, yeah, you're correct. I'm the fine arts coordinator for Robertson County Schools. I'm also uh, serving as the past president of uh, MTSBOA and the president of Tennessee Bandmasters. Um, so I've been in my role here at uh, the district for, this is the third year uh, that I've been the fine arts coordinator. And before that, I spent 14 years at White House Heritage High School in White House. It's a seven through 12 uh, high school that actually opened in 2002. So it's still, still a fairly young uh, school. And then before that, I spent five years at East Robertson High School, uh, which is also a six through 12 middle high school. Uh, that's where I started my career. Um, actually from Robertson County, went to Greenbrier High School and then to UT Martin for my bachelor's and then came back and uh, after I started teaching, did my master's at Austin P. Okay, well, we're glad you're on here. Jacob Campos is the current co-chair of the Tennessee Bandmasters Hall of Fame Committee, and he also works for the Nashville Symphony. So, Jacob, welcome. Thank you for having me. Yes, I do work at the Nashville Symphony, and I am really proud of being one of the co-chairs of the Tennessee Bandmasters Hall of Fame. Uh, it's a really rewarding job, um, but I have a long history in Tennessee as well. Um, uh, I was the band director at Franklin High School as director of bands, and then also was assistant band director uh, with David Adlett for many years there, and he was a great mentor of mine. And I taught before that at McGavick High School for three years. 
And uh, besides my studies uh, in Chicago, I was a, a kid from Tennessee. So I went to McGavick High School and uh, Donaldson Middle and went to Buena Vista when Buena Vista was a middle school, which doesn't exist anymore. Um, and was around all of these great people like Joanne Hood, who was coming over to McGavick and us going over there. And, you know, Jeff Beckman was my band director and I got to put him in the Hall of Fame and just just lots of good Tennessee history there that I've gotten and been very fortunate to be a part of. Okay, Megan Christian is the band director at Bearden High School in Knoxville. And I don't even know your title, Megan. I know you're just an incredible leader in East Tennessee. So fill us in on the gaps there. Well, thanks. Uh, <laughs> um, I guess I, I am the official uh, director of bands, head director at Bearden High School, or, you know, the one where the buck stops, so to speak. If something starts to go wrong, that's, that's my fault. Um, but uh, I've been there since 2005. I started teaching there as an assistant. And then after Mark Cannell left, who was my high school band director after he left, um, I was offered that opportunity and it's been, I've been in that role since 2008. So I've been there for a little while, which has been really amazing. And I'm so grateful for that. Um, I don't think, I don't know if this happened to you, but time just passed. And then it was like, oh my gosh, I've been here <laughs> for like most or all of my career. This is amazing, but um, I still love it. Um, I'm also a mom and a wife. And so a big part of us staying in this, in this community is that my eight-year-old goes to the school programs that are here. And so fingers crossed one day she'll be in my band, right? And hopefully that's going to happen. Um, but besides that, um, I've also had the opportunity to serve East Tennessee in a couple of different roles. Um, I was secretary for the East Tennessee uh, School Band and Orchestra Association, and I have served as band chair for them. Um, and then uh, currently I'm president elect and looking forward to serving as president next year uh, with the East Tennessee School Band and Orchestra Association. So that's exciting um, to be in that role. And I'm also a little bit of, uh, nervous because so many big shoes, so many uh, great people um, that have been in those positions. And I, I've been looking forward though to like um, getting to talk with them, which has already been really wonderful and welcoming too. So um, but currently that's what we've been into. <laughs> and you started in Hendersonville, is that right, Megan? Yes, you were I there did. For, a, for a hot minute. I was there for a very hot minute, two years. I was there, I started in uh, 2003, and um, I'm glad Hendersonville survived my first two years of teaching. <laughs> so that was a very big learning curve, uh, but it was it was really fun. I got to teach uh, with Chris Seeger, um, and he was so wonderful and, and so kind. Um, it was, it was a lot of fun. We, we all learned a lot together. Those a couple of years. That's great. Yeah. Reggie Coleman is band director at Rocky Fork middle in Rutherford County. And I would just say one of our rising stars, maybe just a star in MTSBOA right now. So Reggie put some meat on the bone there for us. Uh, hi everybody. Happy to be here. Thank you, David, for asking me to be uh, a co-host on this show. This is awesome. I'm honored to be here with all of you guys, especially uh, all of you. Uh, I don't know Ollie well yet, but I'm looking uh, looking forward to getting to know him. But I mean, I can call all of you mentors in some way. You know, uh, even Megan. I went to. I'm, I'm from Knoxville, and I uh, went to Carter High School. Dr. Matthew McCurry is my band director, um, and I was able to hang out with. Uh, uh, Miss Christian, uh, sometimes at, at the all leasts and the all states things. And that was awesome. So now that we're colleagues, it's kind of crazy in different places. Um, after I graduated from high school, I went to MTSU, um, and I stayed out there, uh, stayed out here in Middle Tennessee. And I now have been at the Rocky Fork Middle School, uh, in Smyrna, Tennessee, Rutherford County. And I absolutely love it. This is my sixth year of teaching. Um, I started at Laverne and Smyrna Middle School. I had to go back and forth between both of those schools every day. And uh, and I love being at Rocky Fork every single day. I teach there with my friend, Philip Gaita, and I am just, you know, pretty involved in the regional association, the state association. I do what I can. I am the current mid-state clinic coordinator. 
We've got our Miss State Clinic coming up here in January. It's going to be fantastic. Looking forward to it, especially have, looking forward to having my high school band director come back and conduct one of the bands. I'm super excited about that. It's super surreal. Um, I also serve Team EA as I'm on the Action Council for the planning of the next several years of TMEA. I'm excited to be on that. And I am also the equipment coordinator for TMEA uh, as well still. So yeah, I'm just honored to be here with you guys. And thank you for asking me to be here. Reggie, do you have any good stories from being TMEA equipment chair? Because I do. Um, not nearly as many as I've heard. Um, thankfully, uh, since we've been at Offreland, Land, it has been very easy. <laughs> um, I think the I think one of the best stories is like not even an equipment story. It's the fact that now I know all the ins and outs of Opryland. So when it's Christmas time, I just know how to get to where I need to get to. And I, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> when they're checking when they're checking tickets out there, I'm like, nah, I know. Come on, come on, come on. I know where to go. <laughs> That's great. Joanne Hood is past president of everything. Uh, longtime director at John Overton High School in Nashville. And right now, Joanne is in charge of all our Middle Tennessee concert, perform uh, concert performance assessment events. So, Joanne, say hello. Hello, everybody. Hope everybody had a good Christmas. Well, I'm, uh, you know, that's pretty much me. I went, graduated from Columbia High School, had Tom Tucker and Bill Hall. They're why I'm a band director. And then went to MTSU and had Joe Smith and another reason, uh, you know, that I went on this journey and started in Pulaski, Giles County, stayed there till February. Joe Smith called and said, there's a job open in Nashville. You need to go take it. So I interviewed, got the job, moved to Nashville two weeks later. And that was at Wright Junior High and Glencliff. Met Roddy Webb that year. Um, he says, I need an assistant. I said, I need a job. <laughs> and so the rest is history. I became his assistant at Bellevue. He stayed two years. I took over the next year. Um, started Susan Waters in my very first beginning band class which is kind of my pride and joy right there. And uh, then they closed Bellevue, combined it with Hillwood. I went with the transition, made the transition. Uh, Rodney had come back into teaching. He had gotten out and come back to teaching and went to Overton. And then he was going to Vanderbilt and said, you need to take Overton. And so I got the job at Overton, called Rick Murphy, said, Murphy, he was in Florida at that time, said, Murphy, come take my job at Hillwood. And he did. And that begins his. <laughs> and I went to Overton and was there 30 years and so thankful for all of both, both Bellevue and Hillwood. And of course, Pulaski too, sort of. <laughs> and that, you know, that's, that's my life right there. <laughs> Never been married. Got puppies. Two puppies. Somewhere. They're quiet, so we are thankful. <laughs> yeah, mine are in the crates right now. And, and Joanne, just personally, I mean, you know, I worked with you for six years and learned so much. And you got to see me make so many mistakes. <laughs> and, you and know, <laughs> and you stuck with me. And, you know, just I can't imagine my life without you in particular. Me too. Uh, Dr. Ollie Liddell, superstar, is director of bands at Memphis Central. And I think, Ollie, you're the current TMEA band chair. Is that right? Yep. Yes, I am. How you doing, everybody? Um, I have a, I teach at Memphis Central High School. I've been there since 2012, I think. Uh, before that, I taught at East High School in Memphis. Um, and before that, um, <laughs> Mississippi. So I, I taught for two years in Mississippi. So how I get band director in the first place, my dad, Dr. Lewis Liddell, was a director of bands at Jackson State University for almost 20 years. Uh, for that, he was a high school band director. 
um, all over the place. Uh, my dad's a kind of a historical figure. He was the first band director to teach at an integrated school. So it was, a, it was, it was real, it was real interesting. Uh, so growing up with my dad, it's all, it's, it's really interesting anyway, because you, you, your parents, if any of you are parents or kids of band directors, you know what I mean. So, but it was, first off, he told me not to do it. He said, don't do it. Don't, don't, don't be a band director. <laughs> uh, but it was cool. I, I graduated from Jackson State University um, with my bachelor's and I have my master's and PhD from Ole Miss. Um, you know, after I just wanted, I was glutton for punishment, wanted more schooling. And so I, I went back and, and did it, um, before I started teaching, but, but before I started teaching, when I left undergrad, I was a musician, just a traveling musician on the road. Um, people said you're, you're a jazz musician. I was everything if they paid musicians. So anything and everything that paid money, I was doing it, um, uh, for about 10 years. And then, you know, stuff like, uh, you know, life insurance, health insurance, um, regular pay, all that. So I started thinking about that stuff. So that's why I started teaching. No, it's a little more complicated than that. But I, I when I started teaching, I realized this is really what my calling is. And, and so that's how I got in teaching. Um, and, and I serve, you know, I, I, anything and everything. In West Tennessee, I've served as uh, president. I've served as past president on the longest term in history because of COVID. Um, um, we, we, I've served as the state jazz chair, the band chair at West Tennessee. I was the jazz festival chair, concert festival chair, and rehearsal chair for the All West Conference. I think that's all I've done there. And anything else, uh, anything else, you know, just to help out, um, because I believe in service, uh, and because it's all for the kids anyway. Mm -hmm. I think that's it. I think. I think that's enough. You don't need any more jobs right now. Ollie, you've got plenty. Amen. Okay, well let's let's talk a little bit about some of the topics. I, I think this you know this podcast. I've talked to some of you about it uh, offline from here, and what happens in the conversation invariably is one topic comes up, and that leads to another idea, and another idea, and another idea. And so I think we could we could we could kind of plan out the content calendar for this podcast for the next five years, uh, just with a few conversations. So we've got some topics that we've suggested and planned. And so I'm just wondering if there are things that you have in mind or have your eye on uh, that might be great topics for folks to hear in this podcast. So JR, why don't you go first? Well, I think I'm really just excited to have an opportunity to, to get the information out there. I mean, there are a lot of great topics. I, I think looking at especially a lot of the past stuff I mean, there's so many great uh, stories from our past. You know, several years ago, I I went and cleaned out more Stevens' garage, who was longtime MTSBOA secretary, one of Joanne's classmates, um, and he had all of the MTSBOA minutes and uh, sold on ensemble scores and CPA scores and pictures just from from the 70 years of the association. And, uh, you know, I think <clears throat> digging into some of that at some point is going to be really interesting. And there's so many uh, interesting little historical context things uh, that you look at as, as far as civil rights that you see in the minutes of MTSBOA. And I just think a lot of that's really fascinating. Yeah, Ron Rogers, I think, has a whole, like a, I don't even know how to call it. Like a, it's a warehouse of recordings from East Tennessee concert bands. Am I right, Megan? I mean, that's that's yeah. a podcast example right there. Just yes, you know. it's incredible what he's put together. Um, he presented on it at our last director session at our All State East, and it was phenomenal. Um, not only just recordings, but like video, like the audio mm -hmm. and visual part of it. Seeing some of the marching bands and the drill that they did it was it's outstanding. That's cool. Megan, you got anything, uh, the topics that might be interesting to you? Um, so I, as I um, thought about this podcast, I thought the concept that you put together is really interesting and needed. And I think it'll be um, so great to look at historical things that have gone on in the state. Like 
the fact that you mentioned um, the first band um, was here in Tennessee. I think that's phenomenal. I didn't know that. <laughs> Right. I was like, oh, gosh, I feel like a terrible. <laughs> what am I doing? Like, what service am I doing? So um, I think that's awesome to share that stuff. But I also think, you know, as a resource for new teachers and new directors, I think um, as teachers, we probably hear those conversations in the hallway of, oh, I wonder how long they're going to stay <laughs> in the teaching profession or, man, they really need some support. And so I think the part of being able to share that, um, you know, we've all been through our hard times and interesting stories of, <laughs> well, I wish I hadn't have done that. And <laughs> we've survived that, though. We kept going. Um, I think that's going to be really encouraging to people. And then also finding, um, for me personally, as a mom, some work-life balance, I think, is really helpful to share with people, too. Um, I, I love spending time with my family. This time during the break has been wonderful. Um, but, you know, once the school year starts, it's back to, okay, we got band practice and then we got to get in the car and then we got to go to swim and then we got to do homework when we get home and then we got to go. It's back night. Okay. And, you know, and I could fall asleep anywhere if you just leave me sitting there long enough. It's <laughs> our joke in our family. But I think that I, I'm excited. Okay, Dr. Liddell, what about you? Um, there's a lot, of, I have a lot of interest, um, in the band world. Um, uh, jazz is a big interest of mine in jazz education. It's, it's, it's incorporation within, um, uh, school band, uh, the, um, assessments, uh, marching assessments and, and, and different things, marching band, all that, that, that's like concert band music selection, um, I thought was a great topic, um, simply because I think we've all fallen on our tails just by the, the, I think that's so important to concert festival process is picking the right music for your group. And man, I did some really bad jobs of that early on, like really, really bad, just dumb stuff I picked to play. <laughs> <laughs> and I, and I, I think that would be a really great thing for young band directors and maybe some old, old band directors or some, some, Old, old, old band directors too. That, that may need to, they they may need to understand that process. Um, history. Um, 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 my dissertation was about was a historical uh, research project about history, uh, and I, that's something I'm, I'm I'm intrigued by. It's not necessarily a. It's more of a, a not a guilty pleasure. What's the word I'm looking for? It's it's more of a thing that I'm just I'm just uh, interested by. Um, history of band. I didn't know about Christian Brothers because they're right here in the oldest band, and they they and they, in um, they're right here in Memphis. So, and uh, it was actually, it was actually something they said, and I was like, oh, okay, that's that's thing. And and I was actually reading about them in grad school, and it was like, oh, okay, that's that's here. So, and and uh, really awesome program, awesome directors there. Um, um, but that's a different old story. Um, they're band directors of the past that's something that is that's that's really exciting um yep. band directors that i and i'm not from tennessee um that that um and i'm definitely not from east or middle so i'm i'm more ignorant of of, of the band directors of the past and their influence and and then there some people in east and middle may be um interested to know about some band directors uh for the past in memphis um um, uh, I mean, that's that's some really interesting things. Uh, uh, Jimmy Lunsford, uh, that you guys may or may not know, was a jazz. Um, he was a jazz. He was a jazz great, like a, a band leader. And for instance, he taught high school band in Memphis, and basically that was his band. Uh, Manassas High School, what became the Chickasaw Syncopators, that were formed the Cotton Club and all mm -hmm. this stuff. A lot of interesting things there. A lot of interesting things. So I'm excited. Yes, I'm excited. Uh, Joanne, I saw you nodding along with that, especially when Ollie was talking about picking concert band music. I don't want to pigeonhole you into that topic, but you're just so good at this topic about getting ready for CPA and whatnot. Well, you know, and you know what my pet peeve is. Dress on the podium. So yes. <laughs> that has to be a one when we get close, <laughs> especially for women, because it's hard. I mean, it's hard, you know. You guys put on a suit or a tux, and you don't have to think about it. Except you do have to think about whether you're 
keys are hanging out of your back pocket and that kind of thing. What about shoe choice, Joanne? Is it okay for me to wear brown oh, loafers? Yeah, don't wear cripe soled shoes with a tuxedo. <laughs> you remember that one, don't you? Yes, that, well, that wasn't me. That was somebody else I, I heard know, about. I don't. We don't name that names. Was a, that was a one-year sort of person. Let's not get too specific here. Yeah, well, <laughs> we won't. We won't. Uh, but I think I think this is great. I think the history is <clears throat> so important to the young people uh, to coming up. I mean, I lived a lot of it, so and I'm thankful for that because I I knew these people and heard these people and heard that Christian Brothers band. I had forgotten that they were the first band. Though. They played Midwest too. Yeah, yeah, and. I, I just think it, it's going to be a really great thing, especially for young teachers and, and old teachers. Shoot. You know, there's a lot of people out there that have no clue what's going on. But I think picking literature is very important, especially right now. You got to think about that. And, you know, as Nola Jones's mama says, you left your one in the library mm. for classic lines. So. But I think those kind of things, anything to help, any kind of resource to give teachers help somewhere uh, I think is is great no I love the idea that you're doing this and you're the perfect person David to do this because because I'm retired because you're retired and you'll you have a vision for it mm -hmm. uh, and you'll follow through with it it won't be something mm -hmm. that will start for a week or two this will go on I hope so it, it should be are. fun you know, because yeah. I, I love this topic, yeah. too, you know, like enjoying spending time with you all those years ago. Just, you know, hearing the folks that I never even met that, you know, people should know about. Yeah. Zeke Niker's one you need to add. Yep. OK, to your to your history list there, because he was he was in East Tennessee. He was at Tennessee High School for ever and then moved to Middle Tennessee. And he was an amazing Megan, I don't know if you knew him or knew of him. I, I know your father-in-law did. Megan's father-in-law was a phenomenal band director in East Tennessee, Dwight Christian. Yeah. Oh, so, I know, I know who Dwight Christian is. Yep. So, Jacob, you're the Hall of Fame uh, co-chair, so you get access to all of our giants of the past. Uh, is there anything topic-wise that interests you beyond that, or what are you thinking? For sure. Actually, when we were first talking about this podcast at all, I was, I don't know, I was just kind of thrown back into so many memories. Uh, because I was a student in, at McGavick and then was assistant there, um, and I was assistant with you, I got to sit at a lot of tables with a lot of great teachers in the district at dinners and just hear so many stories. Um, and those moments where I was just really quiet and taking it all in, uh, I don't know, I just gained such a respect uh, for the state. And uh, it just, it was just one of those moments uh, when I was at Team EA when like Sydney McKay was on stage and we um, had Eric Martin at the time, CEO of Music for All, come out on stage. It was one of those moments. And when I took the cup down to uh, Tom Tucker's funeral and when when that cup arrived, the amount of people that, turned to look at it and started telling stories about someone I didn't even know. It's just those moments where you start to, you just realize how many people have been touched by all of these great teachers in our state. And for me, the two words that came up that I'm really excited about getting into more are depth and enrichment. You know, school districts like to talk about enrichment all the time, whatever that means, but uh, they, they put it on one of those words. Uh, like plastered everywhere, but it's uh, for me, enrichment is when you get that depth, when you start to really dig into your history and you really know um, the background of your community so that not only when you go to the, the vet down the street and they say, oh, I had such and such band director, I played trombone in their band, that you also learn about it in the different parts of the state. So I'm just really excited about learning uh, all of those stories and honestly, some of the really funny ones too that nobody uh, talks about as much and we, we should, we should hear about, uh, 
the snafus that go on. I think it's good for young teachers to hear that, you know, band directors that have come before them have made mistakes and no done crazy things and had weird traditions and all sorts of stuff. So that they just, you know, that they realize it's a bigger, wider world of just normal people who are trying to do their best. When Renee, uh, you know, my wife had a stroke in September of 2022 and she was in the hospital and then in, and then in rehab, uh, at a at Southern Hills Hospital up in Nashville, and almost everybody she worked with had a band connection. Her physical therapist, her occupational therapist, her speech therapist were all either uh, girlfriends of band people or they had kids in band. And her doctor and Ollie, this is why I was texting you the other day about this. Her doctor is Doctor Abel is the stroke sort of doctor that supervises that floor. His dad is Emerson Abel who was a longtime band director in Memphis, has a, I think he has a star on Beale Street and just a legend there. And so I'm, I'm looking forward to digging into some more of those things. Maybe we can get Dr. Abel on the podcast and, you know, let him tell stories about growing up with his, you know, his dad band director and that sort of thing. So you just never know, you know, again, that's back to those connections that I hope that we can explore through this podcast and, and uh, in other ways, because those connections make us tighter. Makes us better. Okay, Reggie, what you got? Um, yeah, so looking through the, I made like a little list of the some like like four or five of the topics I saw on the list that I thought were going to be really interesting like, to me personally. But just to you know, there are a lot of great things on there. Obviously, there's a lot of the people's names on there that I don't know um, that I'm looking forward to learning about. Um, I was fortunate enough my third year, second year of teaching or half of it until, you know, COVID happened, uh, teaching with Philip Gregory, um, cause he was able, I mean, he imparted so much onto me and he still does. I wish I would've gotten that full year with him, but that's okay. Um, but I was able to hear like so many names of the names that y- y'all are talking about already, like the Bill Holes of the world. Like, I don't think I know who, the, I don't think I knew who that was until I taught with Phil Gregory. Cause you know, Brenda went to Columbia as well and you know, all that good stuff. So, so he's like, he was able to tell me about you know this grade and this grade like he he gave me the whole McGavick spiel and the Overton spiels and the Columbia's and like and I was like wow that's so interesting so I'm really looking forward to hearing more of those stories um about you know people who forged um the way for us um looking forward to talking about picking concert band music and for CPA and for everything else uh just regular because that's uh, I mean I know I'm hot for six years but sometimes I've I thought I thought I had it, and then like this concert in December, I was like, "Why, why, 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 why did I pick that piece? That sounded terrible." <laughs> um, and like, and so you know, but like, all right, back to the drawing board. And so, and I I love like programming and like finding what sounds good, and so I'm interested to hear what you know everybody has to say about that. Uh, teaching jazz, I'm fortunate to be able to teach it every day. Um, and because of that, like, you know, I, but I'm, I am not, you know, the best improviser, you know, I was in jazz and in, in all through high school, I was in the Knoxville Jazz Orchestra, Knoxville Jazz Youth Orchestra, I'm from that jazz orchestra, like the youth orchestra, and um, for like three years, and like, so as far as like style goes, things like that, you know, I'm like, oh, okay, yeah, this is what, 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 what you want to sound like, but when it comes to the more like, um, especially like the improv in, in, improvising a past a certain point like i want to be better at teaching those things i want to be better about teaching rhythm section um you know so i'm looking forward to the, the the jazz segments that we do um trying to get you know my kids to have a different to have a different sound when it comes to that thing comes to that side of things um looking forward to hearing uh the episode on cascade um I think David Lucich is one of the best teachers that we have in the state <laughs> and who most people don't even know his name. And I think it's crazy, you know, I mean, it's understandable, it's a small school, but like, you know, he's got like six kids in all state. And it's like, what, how, how, what, how, how? And so I am looking forward and I love talking to him whenever I get to see him. And so I'm looking forward to, to be able to pick his brain about his process and what he does to be great every day, um, creating a brand for your band. I'm looking forward to that. Um, that's something that I'm trying to do uh, with, you know, we got, we got new hoodies and, you know, we're going to get some stickers and, you know, we go out perform for the community when we can. We did the Smyrna Christmas Parade last year. Um, and so, you know, I want to 
make the Rocky Fork band like the thing at Rocky Fork, right? And it kind of already is, but like just because we're not good at sports. But um, if we ever do get good, get good at sports, I need to make sure that we're still <laughs> we're still there. So, uh, which um, our kids are not very large, so I don't know if that's going to ever happen. <laughs> um and then something that i didn't notice on the list but it might be on there i just didn't notice and like, i guess it's kind of bar part of building a brand too but it's like building a culture like what do you want it like what do you want to feel like in your room um you know how do you want your students to interact with each other how do you want them to interact with you and your staff or your teacher or your, your co-directors co or whatever um just because that's super i mean it's important to everybody and it, or it should be and and that's probably like my favorite thing about what I do is our culture. Like I love playing music and I love, you know, doing all the things, but like how I feel in my room is like the most important thing to me. So I'm looking forward to like learning how to keep building on that and making it better and helping other people improve theirs too. Uh, so those are some things that I saw on that list I'm looking forward to. And um, yeah, I can't wait to get into it. That culture topic is awesome. Like i I want to get into that a lot too, because I, I think a lot of, you know, every band has a culture. It's just, the question is, is it a, a culture that's on purpose or by accident? And, right. you know, I, I want to talk right. about how we can, the things that we can do as teachers to, to get the result that we want in culture and what are our actions and how do those reflect and resonate with the kids? I, I mean, that's a topic that I think is huge and we can, I look forward to getting into that. Well, Jr., Jacob, Megan, Reggie, Joanne, Ollie, uh, thanks so much for agreeing to be a part of this and for being on today. I think we're going to do some good. I think we're going to be able to shed some light on some topics that are important for bands in Tennessee and uh, teachers and students and parents uh, alike can benefit from, from this information. So again, thanks so much, and I'm looking forward to everything that we're going to talk about. Thanks for listening to Bandstand. If you have topic suggestions or need to get in touch with us, email us at tbabandstandpodcast at gmail.com. Your input is important to us, and if you have a topic you'd like us to discuss about the past, present, or future of Tennessee bands, please let us know. Again, that email is tbabandstandpodcast at gmail.com. Right now, we're broadcasting on Spotify and YouTube, so please subscribe, review, and rate. Box 5, please. And more importantly, share this podcast with your friends. See you next week.